All right, so my quick synopsis on lasers. Um, first, my chief complaint is the focus of the illumination. So a lot of guys talk about the power of the laser, and there's like that military-grade, super powerful laser that can blind somebody, which is why it's military law enforcement. And then there's the civilian-style lasers, and you can get into the fancy terminology of what that stuff means. Truthfully, really I don't care. The reality is I don't find that lasers need to be more powerful. I find that the field of view in the illumination is the problem. So two things I want is control of my illumination cone, and I want the power of my illumination that I can cone in at distance and see distant targets. So what that means is like on my spotting system, I need to be able to zoom in a whole bunch with that cone so that my long distance shooter can identify and see with clarity what I'm looking at. And if you think about that zoom and that cone that I'm referring to, it's kind of like that old mag light, but I want to be able to control that flood, that cone, so I can hone in at a distant target rather than wash out at some of the closer stuff. So if you look at each laser and say, well, that's its job and it makes sense, for the PEC-15, which is that military variant, it can do a lot of different roles because I can cone in and out so much. Now the trick to this is the civilian one doesn't let you cone at all. It has a rotary dial on the front like you can control the cone, but it doesn't actually allow you to control it. So when I'm looking for the, you know, the, the military-powered PEC-15, it's not because I want the extra power, it's because I want control over the cone. Now when you look at the mall, the mall is a great example of having those multiple settings, and you can roll through it very quickly and easily with your thumb, which is a great concept. There's even a safety mechanism that doesn't allow you to go into the long distance until you depress it, so you don't accidentally go too high-powered while you're inside rooms. Now, this concept is you don't want to wash out your laser. That's like coming into a room with white walls and hitting it with a thousand luminate flashlight. It might overpower your night vision and kind of wash out the image you're looking at. So the Triad, I think, is super cool for that reason, because unlike the PEC-15, where the device is in front that controls coning, it's kind of hard to activate my laser and then get in front of my laser to make adjustments. The Triad put that adjustment in the tail end, and being in the tail end, it's closest to the operator. So this way, when I trigger things on, you can turn on temporary, or you can tap on and leave it on for the two to five minute window. I personally like to leave my laser on once I activate it. So the only thing I need to play with once my laser is on at night is that cone function. So having it closer to me makes a lot of sense. The mall, being that there's a pressure switch built into it on the top, allows me to use temporary a lot easier. And because I'm using temporary a lot of the time, it makes it easy for me to remove my thumb and toggle through those shorter distance settings. Now, what's weird about the new US night vision laser, which is this guy, is that it's not letting you control the cone at all. In fact, there's only two settings. And one is this diffuser right here, which is for CQB. And kind of like on a PEC-15, the diffuser takes away a lot of that power. So it's made for a wider angle and lower power inside rooms. And then to get to your higher power setting, you literally just remove the diffuser, and now it's got a tighter, further, more powerful cone. Now, as I was playing with all of these different lasers at night at distance, what I was finding that the organic setting of this laser is actually quite ideal. With or without the diffuser, if you find it's overpowering in the house, again, this is civilian brightness. So I don't find that it's overpowering unless you're looking at like the cheap glossy kind of paint that you'll find in like apartment complexes. Outside of situations like that, it's actually quite ideal and I don't feel that it needs to be messed with. What's also cool about this laser system is that that depression button, the activation, is really close and in line with where my thumb naturally rests. So kind of like what they did with the mall, where it's just super easy activation, they're giving me that same position. But the biggest benefit is that I'm keeping a super low profile. So if you look at the optics we'll put on our night vision setups, we usually have to raise our optics up a little bit to see over our PEC-15 or over our triad. Uh, the mall sits nice and low, but the problem is it's off balance. There's a ton of weight off to the left-hand side or right-hand side of my weapon, depending upon if you're lefty, righty. And a lot of guys run a flashlight underneath it, so they're amperaging that extra weight underneath the already heavy laser system. So to the best of my abilities, I want a balanced weapon so I can manage it during recoil and in my fight. I don't like wires hanging off my gun, which is why I don't use pressure switches. These having the pressure switch essentially built into them, to me is a force multiplier. A quick touch on why I think pressure switches are a bad idea. If you're a pressure switch guy, do your thing. But what I do suggest is you keep tabs on how many times you accidentally activate your laser or flashlight. And what that means is when you're huddled up with your buddies and you're about to breach a room or make entry or whatever it is you're doing, and you accidentally turn your flashlight on at your feet, 
that's a pretty catastrophic mistake. It can obviously wash out your night vision and it can get away your position and tell the enemy what you're about to do. So an ND with your flashlight can be equal to or even greater than the ND of your rifle. So be very cognizant of accidental activation. And if you find it's a common trend, consider not having that activation pad. Also, I find that a lot of them are pretty finicky and confusing. When I'm stressed out and I'm in fight mode, I want it to be as simple and as dumb as possible so that whatever level my brain drops to in my emergency, it's very easy for me to do what I need to do. And that means when I want my flashlight, I bring my thumb to my flashlight and I touch my flashlight to activate it. When I want my laser aiming system, I put my thumb on my laser aiming system and I press that button to activate it. Having these pressure switches with wires and doohickeys and this button does this and that button does that, in my opinion, that can get kind of confusing especially when we're unfamiliar with wearing night vision and doing nighttime operations. So, big takeaway is I'm really digging the US night vision's new laser aiming system. I think it's a big force multiplier, and I've, I've found a few bumps in the road already, but overall, I'm very impressed with what it is, and I'm also impressed with the price point. Um, it's sitting around 2K. I believe that's about the NSRP. Don't quote me, of course. Uh, compared to anything else you're seeing on the table, that's uh, substantially cheaper. These guys you'll find the civilian one's around 14-ish, but again, I don't like the civilian one. So the, the other ones are kind of at the whim of the person selling it. And the malls, man, those things are going for like 3K plus. So um, it's a great laser, but the off-balance thing turns me off, and it's just crazy price point compared to what it is. And these two are performance-wise very much the same. Lower profile, lighter weight, balanced, and ideal position. So big home run for the U.S. Night Vision Company. Anyways, that's just my quick thoughts. Uh, leave some comments in the below of what you agree with and what you don't agree with. It won't hurt my feelings. And uh, also let me know if there's other stuff you'd like to have me look into, talk about, or review. Talk to you again soon.